the question to some degree is how do you help someone that's lost? And the answer to that is, if they aren't willing to not be lost, you cannot help them. If you're a psychotherapist of any sort, particularly a behavior therapist, what you help people do is to identify their problems. That's the first thing, is to yeah. confront what's there, the, the reality of what's there, in, 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 as bluntly as possible. And so you often end up as a psychotherapist talking to people about their array of problems. Life is not the same for everyone. Each person's life journey is unique, shaped by their own experiences, challenges and circumstances. While some people may face similar struggles or share common experiences, everyone has their own story to tell. Some people may be born into wealth and privilege, while others may be born into poverty and struggle. Some may have good health, while others may struggle with illness or disability. Everyone deserves respect, dignity and compassion, regardless of their background or circumstances. If you know someone who is struggling with depression, listen to him with empathy and offer support. By offering your support, you can help your loved one feel less alone and more empowered to seek help. Because when people are really lost, sometimes they're so lost that, that they can't be found. And I think the only thing that you can do in a situation like that is get your life together and manifest the reality of an alternative mode of being. That's what you've got. And so, that's the only way I know of to solve an intractable problem. There's a statement in the New Testament that's really vicious. In fact, there's a number of them, but this is a particularly vicious one. And that is, don't cast pearls before swine. And what that means is, if you're trying to help and it doesn't work, then stop helping. It's not helping, right? It may be just wasting your time. It might be making things worse. Now, if you're, if you're offering something and it's not taken, then perhaps you should be offering it somewhere else. Well, yeah. Well, I mean, first of all, you want to be as good an example as you can. That's helpful because then at least someone who's depressed and struggling can see that someone is making it. That's helpful. You know, if you're drowning and you see someone swimming, then, then you can think that swimming might work. Maybe you remember to swim even, you know, um, but, but listening, there's almost nothing better that you can do with people, period, than to listen to them. First of all, you need, they need to know what the problem is. So if you have someone who's suffering around you, it's like, okay, what the hell's your problem? Exactly. Well, I'm in pain. Well, let's hear some reasons why. You're going to have to flounder about, you know, while you're guessing, while you, why you're miserable. You know, now and then you're in a bad mood and you can't tell why. Maybe you snap at the person you love and they say, well, what's up with you? And you don't really know. You're in a bad mood. And then you figure out it was something your boss said to you two days ago. You know, that's short-term ignorance. If you're depressed and, and in, in a very bad spot, it might take you a very long time to articulate the reason. Suffering is one of the realities and parts of our life. It seems that it is unavoidable. Dealing with people who are in crisis can be challenging. Listen them actively and attentively to the person, without interrupting or judging them. Active and attentive listening is a crucial part of providing support to someone in crisis. This means giving them your full attention without interrupting or judging them, and allowing them to express themselves fully and freely. By doing so, you can help them feel heard, validated, and supported, which can be a powerful source of comfort and reassurance. Staying calm and composed can also help them feel more grounded and less overwhelmed. This can help you provide more targeted and effective support. Before you help someone, you should find out why that person is in trouble. When you are dealing with people, who are in crisis isn't people who have a mental illness. In fact, in my experience, that's actually quite rare. What's far more common is that the person that you're talking to has become overwhelmed by catastrophe. 
So their life has fallen apart in some way that makes what they're doing actually impossible. You know, so maybe someone very close to them in their family that they were depending on has developed a very serious illness and that's thrown their entire financial state into utter chaos. And, or maybe they've developed a condition that makes it impossible for them to work. Or, you know, you can, you can imagine the potential range of catastrophes. And they're coming to see you because they're anxious and depressed. But the reason they're anxious and depressed is because everything they have ignored has popped its head back up and is hell-bent on their destruction. Sometimes the thing you do is walk away because there's no other solution. And if you are trapped in pathological relationships and you see no way out of them, if, you, if someone who is sinking has their hands around your neck and is pulling you down, you're not obligated to drown with them. You know, there's a rule too if you're a lifeguard. Some of you have had lifeguard training. How do you approach someone who's drowning and panicking? in the water. Feet out, right, like this. It's like, I'll save you, but that doesn't mean you get to drown me while I'm doing it. And if it's you drown or both of us drown, it's you drown. And that's wisdom. That's not cruelty, right? So. The more responsibility you take on, the more meaning your life has. We have to be more than we are, because if we aren't, we're not going to survive. Pick up your damn suffering and bear it and try to be a good person so you don't make it worse. By finding a balance between caring for others and caring for yourself, you can create a sustainable and meaningful way of taking responsibility for those around you. We are stronger than we think. By standing up straight with your shoulders back, you are demonstrating a willingness to face life's challenges head on and to take responsibility for your actions and decisions. Responsibility. That's what gives life meaning. It's like lift a load. Then you can tolerate yourself, right? Because look at you're useless, easily hurt, easily killed. Why should you have any self-respect? Pick something up and carry it. Pick, make it heavy enough so that you can think, yeah, well, useless as I am, at least I could move that from there to there. And they think, well, I won't carry any load. It's like, okay, fine. But then you're like the sled dog that doesn't have a sled to pull. You're just gonna, you're gonna tear pieces out of your own legs because you're bored. People are pack animals. They need, they need to pull against a weight. That if you decide that you will take that on as your responsibility, that you can put yourself together psychologically, just the courage, and you can actually solve the problems. And, and, and that seems to be true. It's, 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 it's not a naive wish. It, it seems to be well within our capacity. And I mean, that's part of the message I would say of 12 Rules for Life is that dark as things are, there's more light in you than you know what to do with. And there's more light in you than you can possibly manifest. And, and, the, and the way to find that out is to, to challenge yourself against these massive problems and to find out that Life was never about being happy, it was survival. It's about finding meaning, purpose and joy in our experiences and cultivating relationships and connections that bring us fulfillment and a sense of belonging. When we are able to find meaning, purpose and joy in our lives, we are better equipped to navigate the challenges and obstacles that come our way and to cope with adversity in a more resilient and effective manner. You did what you could do to get by. Helping others who are struggling or experiencing hardship can have a positive impact on their lives as well as your own. If you have found this video informative, give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe our channel and hit the bell icon to be notified of our future videos. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.